took. It's P simple. The revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. Talk session series the revolution hey how you doing this is Taryn from the real talk session series the founder and content creator today I'm out of state once again had to come back to my alma mater Morgan State University and one thing that I really enjoy coming back to Morgan State University because my first professional experience here shout out to OC I mean but uh, yeah, you know, I was the RD there, and also that was the first time I really came into my blackness. It was a culture shock, and I loved it. And one of the important organizations they had here was called the Morgan Mile. And today, I have the pleasure of sitting with some of the outstanding gentlemen of the Morgan Mile. What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? What's up? How are you? I'm Kenneth E. Pierre, uh, a senior pol uh, political science major here at Morgan State University. Um, currently, I serve as a student body president here. I also serve as a desk lieutenant in O'Connell Hall, where excellence begins. And my career aspirations, I look to be a university president in the future. All right, all right. Hey, y'all, what's up? My name is Andrew J. Hill, a sophomore majoring in sociology, currently serving as your Mr. Morgan Mile for the 2018-2019 academic school year, and also served as an RA in O'Connell Hall. And in the near future, I, I want to be a lawyer who works with teens in the juvenile court system, showing them a different route in life. Okay, that's what's up. What's up, y'all? My name is Michael. I'm a freshman computer science major and math minor, currently serving as a president of Rawlings Hall, where the impossible is possible. My future career aspirations, I want to be a software engineer. Yo, what's up? My name is James Sykes, freshman health education major from Anona County, Maryland. My future career aspiration is to become a physical therapist. All right. Thank you, fellas, for your time. Definitely appreciate it. And to all y'all, I sweat a little bit, so don't mind that we have no jokes. And you will see the shirt again because we're not balling, and I'm shooting another interview right after this. But, uh, fellas, can you just describe to the people what the Morgan Mile program is and what is its purpose? So the Morgan Mile, well, the Mile is an acronym. It stands for Male Initiative on Leadership and Excellence. And you can explain what it is. The purpose of the Morgan Mile is to enrich Morgan State University's males academically and professionally in order for us to graduate in four years. What do you, what has been the biggest lessons that you guys have learned from the Morgan Mile during your tenure? So for me, the most major lesson that I've learned is understanding the face that you hold on campus. Mm -hmm. So um, over the past month, I've made some poor choices, basically. Mm -hmm. And so just understanding that me being in the Morgan Mile, the choices I make have a greater impact, not only on my school, but everyone else around me. So Kendall, Michael, and James. Okay, cool. So like what really helped you learn and grow from your experiences? Honestly, the people who oversee us in the mile, mm -hmm. that'd be Mr. Hall, Mr. Borley, Dr. Gwen, and Mr. Chad. Uh, I think the biggest lesson I pulled from the Morgan Mile was the uh, professional etiquette when you go out to dinner. Mm -hmm. um, just because a lot of us, when we go into careers and things like that, you're going to be taken out to dinners for jobs and things like that. And so you want to learn how to properly cut which knife to grab and things like that. So the Morgan Mile did an um, etiquette class for us on campus. And they actually took us to a restaurant, uh, Margiano's, where we sat and ate. And they reacted, we actually practiced the tools that we learned in etiquette class. So that was the biggest thing I took from Morgan Mile. And people don't realize that small things like manners and etiquette right. and whatnot, people watch and they observe, and that can determine where you go in the future. So, you know, that's a very important lesson. Yeah. Um, any, anybody else want to share anything else? Um, so for me, like, the Morgan Mile really emphasizes pretty much just how to be a man. Like, mm -hmm. we're big on, you know, uplifting women in our community, things like that, and just manners like we said and so little stuff like that um that really helps us because a lot of people don't have that male guidance in their life yeah. so the morgan mile is a good i don't want to say fallback but it's a good support system mm -hmm. that helps us you know get through hard times like that so with all the lessons that you guys have learned and in the climate that we're currently in with the me too movement and other uh issues going on where women are finally being heard um how do you guys address your boys when they're being problematic because that's something that it's a very hard conversation to have but i think coming from people who are younger and have those experiences that you know it, it's more powerful and impactful so you know just let us know what y'all usually do how y'all go about it so me personally um you just gotta g-check them you gotta keep it real with them like if you i look at it like this if he was talking to my mother or my grandmother or my sister or my daughter, like, you know what I'm saying, yeah. hypothetically, I, 
that's not okay with me. Like, you can't just talk to females any kind of way, especially those who, without them, you wouldn't be here. Yeah. So I specifically hold female to a higher standard because I was raised in a household full of females. Mm. So I, they don't allow you to <laughs> just talk any kind of way to them. So for yeah. me, that's actually, like, really important. Like, so if I see one of my, my friends or just somebody in general, it's like, yo, like, hold, like, check yourself because... You, you, you sound crazy right now. Like, you can't do that. Like he was saying, um, you you can't be scared to check your friends. Yeah. Um, not saying that he does this, but if Andrew messes up, Andrew knows I'm going to bring it up to him. Yeah. He, may not, like, he may not like it in that moment, yeah. but you're holding, like you said, accountability. Um, that's the biggest thing. A lot of times, a lot of men um, don't want to hold each other accountable or for different things. Yeah. Um, they see something, they just walk past it. But no, you have to speak up in that moment. Yeah. What if that was your daughter or your niece or your granddaughter, your your mom, your wife, you want someone to speak up for them. So yeah. I just do it to other people as well. One thing that I think is that if a person can't check you, then they're not your friend. Right. Or they're not a person who should be in your life. True. So just me being on this campus over the past two years, I've seen a lot of people who don't hold their friends accountable. Yeah. And so when, when certain things come out, it's more so, oh, why, why is she telling other people what happened yeah. instead of saying okay well man you you did mess up but here's how we can c- c- come back and move forward basically yeah so and I, pl- I applaud all you fellas too because that's tough, something hard to do especially when you're talking to your peers but you have to check actions in the very beginning because they can snowball and it can be something bigger you know and people will think that the negative things they're doing are right because they haven't been checked so definitely salute to y'all applaud y'all definitely now i got to talk to my senior real quick right so what's some advice you would give to the to young heads because you got some freshmen here but you've been here for a while so like what's what's one of the biggest lessons you learned from freshman year and what advice can you give to freshmen uh the best advice I've gotten that I've taken is to be yourself. Uh, a lot of people I feel like on Morgan campus, they are, um, they're not themselves. They're looking for, looking at that person they can follow. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people want to be clout chasers. Um, they want that name. They want that big title on campus. And you get that by just being yourself. So yeah. I always tell people, my freshman year, I only had three friends. Mm. My senior year, when I was SJ president, I got 12, 1,200 votes. Yeah. So from three friends to having twelve hundred votes to being the second top student on campus, and I did that by being myself. I never, I never even went to no party on campus since I've been here. Yeah. Uh, never was that type of, type of guy to um fit into that type of scene that I wasn't a part of. Mm. Um. So I would say be yourself is the biggest lesson that I've learned. Um. Have fun. Your type of fun isn't always other people's type of fun. Yeah. So everyone would go out and party our freshman year. Me and my friend, we will always um have our own party. We would order Chinese food and do homework. That was our, yeah. that was our version of a party. A lot of people was like, oh, that was boring, but we have fun doing it. So have fun and be yourself. Yeah, individuality is very important, and you're truly happy once you're able to be yourself in any room that you're in. So, you know, that's one important thing that I learned, too, especially coming from Morgan, because I came from a PWI background, claimed they was diverse, but you got a little bit of black people. That's why I love Morgan, because people quantify diversity by the color of your skin. They don't see re- regional diversity, religious diversity, sexuality, gender, et cetera. And Morgan has all that. Right. And that's one thing I really love and admire. So for my freshman, second semester freshman, so like what's one of the biggest lessons y'all learn equally? Um, just like what Kendall said, like being yourself, you know. Uh, I came in here with like the main goal of just like, you know, hitting the ground running, trying to get into organizations, trying to set up my career and everything. But I think the biggest lesson is, you know, it will take time to, it takes time to build like a true community it takes time to build a true foundation or platform that you had to lead yourself so just being patient and then the opportunities will come my way all right cool so for me one of the biggest lessons i learned was just don't be afraid to ask for help yeah so a lot of the times we think like okay we got it i don't need nobody i'm good you yeah. give me something i'm run with it but it's okay to ask someone who's been in your position before you know what i'm saying so if i wanted to run for sga president or, or whatnot I'm I'm not gonna say I got it. Like I'm good. I'm gonna be like, yo, tell me everything I need to know. Yeah. Tell me whatever you can to help me build off what you already built and make it better. So that's probably my biggest uh, lesson. So like one of my favorite things when I came here to Morgan, I hate the word woke, but students were woke when I came here and like it was a complete culture shock for me. Like the fact that there was such love for black empowerment or people and whatnot. Me coming from a background of being around black people, but it wasn't really celebrated, whatnot. 
but here is a celebration of blackness all the time. So like, what's some of your favorite things about being here at Morgan State University? Other than homecoming. Um, homecoming's popping. <laughs> yeah, home, homecoming's lit. Come, if you haven't experienced the Morgan homecoming, you have to come. Yeah, yeah. Um, personally, I like the convocations. Um, they're really historic. So like, I didn't know until my sophomore year that Samuel Green, uh, who was like a big, um, big in the like northern area with like abolition of slavery and things like that, mm. that he had a, he was like, he had a role in the founding of Morgan. I never knew that until I went to the convocation. Mm. So they tell a lot of history at those convocations that people actually don't go to. Yeah. Um, so that's my favorite part of our history here at Morgan. Um, mine would have to be c- campaign season. Yeah, um, y'all go all out. Y'all go all out. <laughs> currently, campaign season is 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 going on right now. But last year, um, I ran for the position of. Last year, I ran for the position of Mr. Sophomore. Mm. I lost about, I think, 12 votes. But just just going all out, going out and t- t- talking to people, it was, it really, like, I'm outgoing, but I'm also shy at the same time. Yeah. So just having to go and meet new people that I never talked to before. Push you out your comfort yeah, zone, really right? amazing. And then, like, during, during that month, seeing just everybody in our student center having their – who has a table sharing their ideas with um with them everybody it really just brings the entire campus together basically yeah i think one of my favorite parts is to be the faculty uh i've really found some faculty members that like they really hold me down i can go to them with my problems or help or anything like that and me building that connection with some of these faculty mem- faculty members has opened up some doors for me like recently i've been Provided the opportunity to help film major events on campus, provided like the convocations, I did the winter graduation. So it's like I'm getting more experience, but I'm getting more experience because I was able to build connections with the faculty members who really look out for us. And as a staff member, too, I was allowed to do a lot of things to learn different things, too, like how you said you were able to film stuff and whatnot. I've helped out with athletics, uh, filming stuff, got my hands into budgets and whatnot. Shout out to Dr. Gwen. So that's one thing I love about Morgan. They're always about mentorship and making sure that we're good, you know, because not everybody going to make sure we're good, you know. So that's one thing I love, the homegrown, you know, just taking care of our people. Um, So one thing that I'm big on and when I was here at Morgan was what's your legacy going to be? So what do you guys want your legacies to be at the end of the day? I've been asked that question probably four times this school year, and every time I get asked it, it's so hard. Um, So me, personally, I want to be known as someone um, who was relatable and transparent. Mm. Um, And as SGA president, I would be like to be known as someone, um, not who made a lot of change, but someone who inspired change. Because a lot of times we come in in office and say we wanted to change so much, where you only get the ball rolling. And so I always tell the people under me, like, I'm only throwing the alley hoop. It's up for you to go in and dunk it. Yeah. So a lot of things I'm setting up for people just to go in and dunk in the next future. So. Yeah. And since you said you want to be a college president, yeah. you got to manifest that. Right. So when you become the college president, make sure you're a college president of the students. Right. Because oftentimes college presidents, they get caught up in the business aspect of things. In the politics. It's a business, yes, but you got to take care of your customers, which are the students. So make sure you learn that lesson, you know, because I work in higher education and I know how it is. So for me, um, as I stated before, I'm only a sophomore. So I feel like as of right now, I'm not sure what what I want it to be. Mm. Or I guess I mean, I know I kind of have some idea. I want everyone to know me as that person who didn't stop because he had one small us, us setback. Yeah. So that's that's really all I know. But I mean, in the future, I feel like uh, I'll be able to answer this this question better after yeah. next school year. And it's all good because you there's no time frame on when you want to know what you want to do. And the main thing that I want to drop on y'all is that without experience, you can't have wisdom. So make sure you learn from all your failures, all your setbacks, and make sure you change so you don't fall into the same traps and whatnot. So uh, we're beginning to wrap up. Being that it's Women's History Month, who are some women that you guys look up and inspire you all to be the best version of yourselves? Um, to be honest, the woman who inspires me the most is my mother. Um, I say that because she was a single mother, so she, mm-hmm. we had it was me and my sister, and she just basically instilled in me manhood in the best form that she could. Yeah, and I feel like her doing that, I I look at things a different way. So I look at things, 
I wouldn't say from a woman's perspective, but I can see more where they're coming from mm. just because of the fact of how I was raised. Yeah. And I appreciate her for that. And also just her hard work in general. You know, she started off in education, and but she worked her way up to now vice president of a college. All so right. Right. that type of drive is something that I pride myself in, and I would want to be like that as well. Uh, I would also have to say my mother, um, she didn't have a traditional background, like college-wise, and she grew up kind of... I guess like her um her history, not her history, but her her childhood and everything was really rough. But um she was able to still break down barriers. She works for the government, she has her hand in multiple businesses, she's a travel agent, she sells jewelry. So her being able to not come from a strong foundation, but still being able to live her true self and make change and make things possible for me and my sisters is it's something that, I mean, I would be stupid not to look up to her and try to follow her and try to, you know, be better than her. Not to, like, I want to be better her, but uh, my family believes that every generation gets better. So me wanting to push myself to be better than my mother and to carry my sisters and show my sisters, you know, what it's, uh, what it's like to be on top, what it's like, you know, to have things for yourself, be able to do what you want to do is very impactful. I, too, would say my mom. Uh, she was a single mom. Uh, my stepdad passed away when we were... I was in kindergarten. My brother was in second grade. No, I was in second grade. My brother was in fourth grade. And my stepdad passed away. So my mom, she had a newborn. My sister was one years old. Me and my brother were older. And so she raised all of us uh, to be great young people. Uh, my brother, who's someone I look up to now, he's an engineer. Um, so my mom, she raised all of us, uh, put us in church and things like that, gave us deep uh, values and deep um, principles and things like that. So, um, again, working in the government, worked her way up. So I think my mom was to be my inspiration as well. Mine, uh, again, is going to be my mom. Um, I feel like growing up, I was the child. I, I was kind of like, I, I caused a lot of problems. Yeah. So not just more so in the house, not really outside the house, but like I, I stressed her out. Yeah. And out of 18 years of my life, she, I mean, even now I still cause problems, but yeah. eight, no, I'm 19 now and she's never just stopped, you know? So she always just kept going and kept pushing. I feel like she keeps pushing because of me. Yeah. And so I feel like whenever I mess up, mm. I just, I, I want to give up sometimes, but I think of her. And so yeah. she's the reason that I keep going. And that's the thing. Black women have a strength within them that keeps us going and inspires us. And, you know, they always will see the good in us no matter what, you know. So take those lessons, you know, learn from it. And no karma may come back when y'all have kids. So, you know, when y'all's mom out when y'all little, it might come back. You know it is. But, yeah, you know, just make sure, you know, you just continue to make your, your parents proud. Um, you guys are doing your thing. You're in college. So I salute y'all because we need more black men who are inspired and doing their thing. So keep doing your thing. Definitely. Learn from, you know, your mistakes. And I just see y'all going to have a bright future ahead of y'all. So I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much for coming out. Uh, you want to let the people know how they can reach y'all. If you want to drop your IGs, whatever, get your likes on. Um, well, you can follow the... <laughs> he was uh, Wait, he, no, he was quick with it. You <laughs> can me. follow our page, the, the Morgan Mile, at Morgan Mile mm -hmm. on Instagram. And you can follow me on, on IG at AJH3 with two underscores. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Yo Kennel. That's Y L K E N O L D. All right, so y'all can follow me on Instagram at J dot Sykes thirteen. That's J dot S Y K E S thirteen. Your boy, a little new to the Instagram, but you can help me get my followers up at underscore Mike dot Jack and Twitter too at M J Ready Eight, the number eight. And my Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter. <laughs> it's Drew the kid underscore that's Drew D A K underscore. I right, agree. Fam, you got two different. <laughs> it's, it's all good though, <laughs> fellas. Again, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. Keep doing your thing. Shout out to the Office of Residence Life and Housing, Dr. Gwen, Mr. Hall, Mrs. Jackson, everybody else that I started with, everybody that's here right now. OC, Salute OC. to y'all. OC all day long. OC. OC. All right, all right, all right. But thank you, fellas. OC though, but uh. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. It's PC, the revolution will be digitized.